Hey everyone and welcome back to Sasquatch Theory. In today's video, I will be interviewing a hunter from Oklahoma, and let me tell you, he has some Bigfoot stories to tell us. It seems to me that hunters have a lot of sightings for obvious reasons. They spend unusual amounts of time isolated from people in the forest. Hunters also carry weapons and also hunt the same prey as the Bigfoots. They also use scent masking techniques and wear camouflage clothing, making it harder to be detected. Hunters will often go into remote areas that have not been disturbed by people for many months or possibly longer. I think we can speculate all we want, but in the end it seems the Sasquatches are undoubtedly smarter than most humans. Robert from Oklahoma has some very interesting encounters and eye sightings, and I think everyone will appreciate him getting in contact with me. If you have had an encounter with a Bigfoot or cryptid being, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. Alright everyone. Let's get into this next encounter. So you're uh, you're in Missouri. Yeah. What state are you in again? Are you from Oklahoma? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Oklahoma. I'm in North Carolina right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I've been to Oklahoma a bunch of times. We, My family would drive all the way to Mexico. They got family there, and they'd go through Oklahoma and Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma's uh, it's a good place to see Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. There's a lot of um, hunting and fishing going on there. From what I've seen, there's a lot of big lakes and a lot of forest. Very big lake. Well, yeah, big lakes, uh, a lot of forest, a lot of mountains and trees. On yeah. The east, eastern half of the state. Right, yeah. Um. So, I guess, um, when, I'm going to ask, when did you begin to have activity or when did you first notice it and is it still going on today? Well, we, uh, uh, in, nine, in uh, oh, about the 23rd of December, 1967, is when uh, we moved on to the ranch in Oklahoma. We were living in Maryland. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm Cherokee and Lakota Sioux Indian, so... My mom and dad came to Oklahoma to uh, get to know the family in Oklahoma and uh, see what it was like. And they got out here that summer. And my dad started uh, uh, started to manage a, uh, a 5,500 acre ranch. <clears throat> and uh, they didn't want to take me and my sister out of school until Christmas break. So we were staying with my grandparents. And then at Christmas break, uh, my grandparents brought us to Oklahoma, but 23rd of December, 1967. Mm -hmm. And then that summer, uh, we finished up the school year in Eastern Oklahoma, a real small town, real small school. And, uh, so I I was over. Do what? Tom, oh, listening. I didn't say anything. So I was over at a uh, uh, a friend of mine that uh, one of the guys I met uh, in school. His mom and dad had a little farm. Oh, uh, it was probably uh, oh ten miles, something like that, uh, up the creek from the ranch. And uh, I was. Uh, I was with Junior that day, and we were down. To, we spent the day down at Spring Creek, and uh, there was a bunch bunch of the kids we went to school with were there. Uh, and uh, later on that evening, when their mothers would, they had to go back home to cook dinner for the dads when they got out of the fields and got off work and all that stuff. So they all started going home. I don't know about four o'clock, three o'clock, somewhere in there. And, uh, me and Junior were at the creek still, and and Junior said, "Hey, you know, let's uh, 
let's go ask mom if we can uh, uh, go camp out on the creek tonight. And I said, yeah, hell, that sounds like a good idea. So we went up and uh, asked his mom and Jules said, yeah, you guys go ahead. You know, just be careful and watch out for snakes. So uh, we grabbed uh, sleeping bags and uh, our guns. I had a 22 and Junior had a little single shot, 20 gauge shotgun. And we grabbed uh, uh, a couple 32, uh, 32 ounce bottles of pop and a bunch of chips and cookies and crap like that. And we went walking up the creek to look for a place to camp. And the creek, the, the, the creek bottom was, it was in summer. So it was, everything was green. It was thick, a lot of brush, trees, all that crap. And we came up to a bend in the creek where the creek made a right-hand turn. And on the inside of that bend was a, a cleared out rocky area. And uh, so we thought, well, we'll just, we'll just make camp right here. So we uh, put all our stuff down on the rocks and we went and gathered up some firewood and crap like that for night. And so we jumped in the water in the creek and we played some more and, and we, we shot stuff and, you know, just did what kids did. We were, uh, shit, I was 10. I was 10. And I think Junior was, he was either 10 or nine, something like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, so it started getting dark and uh we thought we'd go ahead and start the fire and uh eat so we got us a fire going and uh we were sitting down next to the fire and hell we drank every bit of both of those two bottles of pop and all the cookies chips everything we took we ate drank and uh we laid down when it got dark and eventually drifted off to sleep. And uh, I woke up and it sounded like somebody was uh, walking down the creek. They were walking on the shallow side of the creek, which is our side. And I laid there and I listened to that and I thought, who is that? You know, they're, they're this, you know, they're, we're out in the middle of nowhere. You know, who the hell is that or what is that? And it got closer and closer, and it, it was probably within 15 feet of us. And But it was in, in, in the, at the edge of the creek, and it was there was a lot of brush, trees, and crap. Well, hell, it was night. We couldn't have seen it anyway. But And uh, Junior, he said, Bob, you hear that? And when he said that, he didn't say it in a low tone. He used his regular voice. And when he said that, this person, we thought it was a person, stopped. And I told Junior, I said, yeah, I hear that. And he said, what is that? Or who is that? I said, man, I don't know. And uh, so we set up and I grabbed my gun and I put it across my lap. And this thing started walking in deeper water. So that told me he turned to the right. And he was walking to the opposite bank because that side of the creek where the water comes around the outside of the bend was, you know, cutting out the uh, uh, cutting out the bank, making it deeper right there. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it it walked across the bank. I mean, the water the creek, and you could hear it climb up the other side. And all this time, we're thinking, you know, who the hell is this? And right directly in front of us across the creek on the other side of the creek, there was what we called pawpaw thickets. It, 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 it was a, it, all that is is a bunch of little trees, two to three inch diameter, and, and they'll get six, seven, eight, nine foot tall, but there'll be a real thick grove of them. And they'll just sprout up hell anywhere. And uh, we called them pawpaw thickets and they were off colored white color kind of like kind of the color of an aspen well okay. whatever whatever this was it it walked down the bank and when it got in front of those pawpaw thickets we could we could make the outline out it was just a big black whatever the hell this was and it walked down and it stopped and it turned to the left and 
you could make out the whole shape of it then. And this thing was freaking huge. And uh, Junior said, get your flashlight. And uh, the flashlights we had back then, it was those, uh, I don't know, there were like those 29 cent, 39 cent plastic flashlights you get from Walmart that you put two D cell batteries in it. And uh, I got my flashlight and he got his and I shined it across there and hell, those things can't throw a beam or shit, but it, it kind of lit up. And when I shined the light on this thing, it the, the eyes in it reflected the light and they were red and they were huge and they were a long ways off the ground. I mean, I, I, I just, I was mesmerized by the eyes. I, I just, I couldn't take my eyes off of them. They, they, was, they were just freaking big. They were huge and a long way off the ground. And neither one of us said a word. We just stared. And the next thing I re- the, that happened, I realized was I saw fire jump out of the front of Junior's shotgun. And the gun made a loud boom on the creek, but the thing I remember most about that was was seeing that fire come out of the front of his gun in pitch darkness, and this thing started. This thing started screaming and roaring and I mean just raising hell, and it started thrashing the. Uh, it was thrashing brush around trees and all kinds of shit, snapping, breaking stuff. <clears throat> I jumped up, and I started hauling ass. I started running through the woods. I was making a beeline straight for Junior's house. I had my gun with me, and uh, that, that's the only thing I had with me. And, and I mean, man, I was scared to death. I was hauling ass. And I could hear something behind me running. And, dude, I didn't know if that was Junior behind me. I did not know if that was this, whatever the hell this thing was. But it was neither one of them was going to catch me, and it was about a mile, I guess, through the woods. It was about a mile to Junior's house, and I got to the the field. There was a field. Junior's house set up on top of a little hill. It's probably forty, fifty foot tall, and at the bottom of that hill, his dad had a little pasture down there where they kept a couple of cattle in. And I do not remember. I you had to cross that fence twice, from the wood side, through the pasture, and across the other side, and then up the hill to their house. I do not remember crossing that fence. But I I remember the next thing that that I really remember is climbing up that hill, and I remember climbing that hill, and running to the corner of their house where they had a uh, his dad had a floodlight out there. I was completely out of breath. I was wore the hell out. I was scared, gasping for air. Well, Junior was right behind me. He came up the hill and he came up behind me. That scared the hell out of me again. I didn't even know he was there. We ran in the house, blew the front door open, and we just started babbling, yelling. His mom jumped up and ran in there. His dad jumped up and ran in there. You know, said, what the hell? What? the hell's going on and we tried to tell him what happened and and we just we just sounds like babbling idiots and uh his dad said look you know you guys just calm down i'm going back to bed we'll talk about this tomorrow during breakfast well he went back to bed and me and junior both turned turned to his mom and started trying to tell her what happened and she said, look, guys, go to Junior's bedroom, get some sleep, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. So we went to Junior's bedroom, but there wasn't, we weren't going to, we didn't get any sleep. We were wound up like an eight-day clock. And uh, the time passed, and we heard his mom. It was starting to get light outside, and her, his mom was in the kitchen. And so we took off in the kitchen, and we we had calmed down a lot since then. So <clears throat> we were more rational of telling her what had happened. 
Mm-hmm. Then uh, Howard, uh, his dad came in and, and said, all right, what happened? So we told him what happened. And he said, well, he said, after we eat breakfast, I want you guys to take me down there and show me where this happened at. So we uh, ate breakfast. Howard went and got dressed, came out. Junior grabbed his 20 gauge, not I grabbed my 22, like he was going to do any good. But yeah, we told Howard, said, "Man, you know, you better, you better get your gun. If this thing's still down there, it, it's huge. You're going to need it." He said, I, "I don't need a gun." He said, it, "It's whatever it was. I'm sure it's not there now. It's, it's daylight." So we took off. We went down there and showed him where where it was at. And all our stuff was still there. N- nothing was tore up or anything like that. It was still on the bank. <clears throat> so Howard went down. He walked up the creek and found a shallow spot where he could cross. And he came back down. And uh, uh, we could see that this thing had uh, it, it had it had ripped out and snapped off the some a lot of those pawpaw trees and, and just slung them around through them. And uh, so Junior, Junior's dad, Howard, walked around up there and went through the thickets and uh, the pawpaw thickets. And he was there for about, I don't know, 30 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes. And, and he came back across the creek and he said, well, he said, I don't know what you boys saw, but uh, it, it, it was pissed off. He said, uh, rest of the summer you guys stay away from these creek bottoms down here until we you know until we know what this is and uh so we agreed and didn't have a problem with that and uh that was the end of that deal but we <clears throat> when when deer season came around when it got cold and then we uh hunted deer and hunted squirrels and stuff we hunted Stayed around the mountains, which was, yeah, you know, hell, it wasn't it wasn't far from the creek bottoms at all. But uh, we never never went back down and hunted the creek bottoms. And I didn't realize. Uh, I mean, I knew I was scared bad, mm-hmm. but it it must have been. When when we would deer hunt or up in the mountains up there, not far from the creek, I never thought about that. And because uh, because you know we would walk in before daylight, and we would walk in after dark, and and I never I never thought about that. <clears throat> yeah. And all this happened. The, the, these eight years happened. The, the encounters with the four, uh, all the stuff that happened in between that, that uh, I never, we didn't know what that was. We, we, I didn't, not until the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek came out, uh, uh, me and another buddy, Daryl, I, I, I was, we drove the back roads to that, uh, it was a drive-in. And there was about four or five of us went and saw that movie. That was when I knew what the hell that was. And uh, so while this whole time happened, uh, what brought all this stuff back was in uh, 2017, I had aneurysm surgery. Mm-hmm. They found they found four bad aneurysms in me, and, and while I, while they did surgery on me to fix them, they uh, severed a femoral nerve in my left leg, and and that that retired me. All right, I'm sorry to hear that. I I was done. So and, and that made me retire ten years before I had planned on retiring, and. Uh, so I, I I was at home all the time, 24-7, and I, I was going freaking nuts. I mean, hell, I started working in 1975 and never stopped until then. Mm-hmm. So I went to, uh, turned on the TV one day, and I had, I had a smart TV, 
and it had a uh, uh, YouTube app on it. I didn't know what YouTube was. It's the first time I'd ever looked at that. So I clicked on it. <clears throat> All these videos started popping up, and I was going, you know, just looking and looking and looking. Well, uh, a couple of Bigfoot videos showed up, popped up. And I thought, what the hell, Bigfoot? I'll be damned. So I clicked on those, and I watched them. And the more of those that I watched, a lot of the stuff that happened when I was growing up on the ranch was coming back to me. And, uh, you know, it's like, shit, I saw that. You know, uh, uh, I heard that. That was that. That was what I heard that day or night, whenever it happened. All this stuff started coming back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I got engrossed in it. I mean, I, I watched, uh, everything I could watch on it. And after a while, when you, when you watch them a lot like that, I mean, after, when you watch one, you can tell if the one you're watching, if the, you know, if the people, if they're trying to blow smoke up your ass, if they're full of bullshit or not. Because you can tell the people just by the way they're telling you what happened, if it really did happen or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, cause, uh, I didn't know until later, but there's a lot of Bigfoot wannabes out there that, you know, but anyway, so this started bringing all this stuff back to me. I started remembering all this shit. I haven't thought about this stuff. Oh, crap, man. 40 plus years. So all this stuff started coming back after that happened. It wasn't until the movie, that movie came out when I knew then I knew what we were, what, what this was. Uh, well, Junior, he wouldn't talk about it. He would not talk about it. And this thing had, uh, I guess it had pushed it so far in the back of my brain that it, it completely shut it off. Because I, that, that's the only thing I can think of is why we could still uh, deer hunt and squirrel hunt up in the mountains up there and uh, be out there at dark and... and not be thinking about what had happened, you know, a quarter mile away. That's the only thing, logic thing I can come up with why it didn't happen. It just it burned it in the back of my brain and shut it off and it never came back out. Right. So after that deal happened, the movie came out, knew what it was. Well, the, the year after that, it was deer season. And, uh, I had uh, deer hunted along the creek up to another friend of mine's house. Uh, his dad and grandpa had a little farm that was probably, oh, three miles up the creek from the house. So I, I deer hunted the creek bottom, the creek up to Randy's house. And uh, me and him, we deer hunted with his uh, grandpa. We called him Poppy, and uh, he took us deer hunting, and uh, so we hunted that day, and we went back, got back to their house uh, oh, a couple hours before dark, because I had to walk home still, so instead of walking down the creek, I thought, well, I'm going to I'm gonna climb the mountain, I'm going to go up to the top of a mountain, and I'm going to hunt back the top of the mountains and the ridges uh, on my way back to the house, because I've, I've never hunted up that part yet. So I took off and I got to the top and uh, I was working my way to the house. I was working my way around the tops of the ridges and I'd walk up to the ridge and I would stop and I would look at the ridge on the other side, <clears throat> watch the hillside on the other side and the draw. And I was standing at one of them and I, I was scanning and I was looking for deer, looking for something to move. And I noticed it looked like a, uh, a cave on the other, on the, ridge straight in front of me and i thought damn is that a cave and so i walked around the ridge line and i walked up to it and, and it was right at the top of the hill and uh you had to walk around the left side of this cave and walk down the hill a little bit turn to the right and you could walk straight in front of the cave 
And so that's what I did. And I, I got I got down and I looked up in there, and it, it only went back shit, maybe three feet, you know, not very far at all. And so so I crawled up in there to see if I could uh, sit in there and deer hunt, keep me out of the weather or any kind of rain or anything, and I could watch the other side of the hill. So I got up in there and I could uh, put my back up against the cave wall and my legs would stick out. And but I could see everything. I mean, I could see the whole ridge on the other side, the uh, the hillside, the the draw on the bottom, everything. <clears throat> I thought, hell, great. This is where I'm going to be tomorrow morning, and I, and I'm going to sit here all day. And uh, so I took off and went to the house, and I got up. Man, I got up way too early, and uh, I got dressed got my pack my gun my flashlight and i took off and i and i left it was probably oh man probably four o'clock in the morning four thirty, and uh i was making a beeline to that cave and i had the flashlight pointing on the ground in front of me so i wouldn't trip and and the leaves were real dry it was like walking in a bowl of cornflakes and uh, and I wasn't taking my time getting there. I mean, I was I was making tracks, and so I was making a lot of noise, uh, crunching the leaves. And I got there. I, I went down the left side of the cave, and I walked back in front of it, and I got up underneath it, and uh, I got settled in. I was laying there with my back to the back, and and uh, oh, probably. I don't know, uh, a couple of feet, you know, my legs were sticking out the front of the cave and I had my gun laying across my lap and uh, I was just sitting there waiting for daylight. And I then I, could, I started hearing something crunching the leaves, walking, crunch, 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 and it was coming my direction. And at first I thought, damn, that, that's that's a deer, deer moving around. It's too early for deer to move around. And so I kept listening and I thought, well, hell, it's, you know, as soon as it gets light, if it's still here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot it. So I kept listening and it kept getting louder and louder and getting closer. And I thought, damn, this thing's walking, you know, it's walking right up to me. And it, it walked up to the edge. When it got to the edge of this cave, the top of it, 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 it had, when it, when it stopped, it had uh, knocked off some little rocks and some small sticks and stuff off the side of the cave. It landed down in front of me, and some of it landed on my legs. And I thought, what the hell is this? You know, what, and then I started thinking, this is a mountain lion, it, or it's got to be a bear. So I pulled my legs in real slow, real quiet, and I and I put the bottom of my feet on the ground, had my knees up in there, and I had my gun. The buttstock was on the ground, and the rifle was pointing up. I, the barrel was pointing up, and you could hear you could hear this thing breathe. I mean, you could hear it suck in air, and when it exhaled air. It would be like a, uh, like a, like a soft growl type thing, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And and it stood there and it just did that. And I thought this this is definitely a bear because it was a deep guttural type exhale type. This has got to be a damn bear. But holy shit, man! If this thing jumps down, the only thing I can do is just start shooting and unload my gun and haul ass because if it dropped down, I had nowhere to go. I mean, I had nowhere to go. I mean, it was standing only three foot above my head. And if it came down, it blocked completely block off the entrance for me to get out and I'm just screwed. So I, I, I just sit there and prayed and listened to this thing. And it must have, I don't know, it, it, it seemed like hours, but it was probably just minutes, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes or something, and it just stood there. And then it it turned, 
and it walked back off the same direction it came from. And this whole time, that whole time, and for years after that, you know, it, 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 it was a bear. It had to have been a bear. And, and the reason I, I, got, I got onto the bear thing is because when we moved on the ranch, uh, the owner of the ranch, one, one Saturday, him and his wife came down. <clears throat> he was talking to dad. They were going over uh, what pasture that they summered the cattle in, what pasture they wintered the cattle in, and uh, you know what pastures were the best for hay and all this crap. You know they were talking about ranch stuff like that. Well, he was the one that mentioned that in the winter they used to keep the cattle in the pasture behind the barn. But it got to where he said bears would come down in the winter and uh, uh, snatch a calf. And so to keep to stop that, they decided to move the, the wintering range, let the cattle winter in the pasture right across the uh, creek from the house. And the house set. Oh, it's yeah, that house uh, set on top of the hill. Uh, the cliff was probably 50, 60, 70 feet. Well, 50 or 60 feet, maybe from the creek straight up. Right below the house was the creek. Right on the other side of the creek below the house was the winter pasture. And it was a big, big pasture. So that's where they wintered the cattle at. So the bears wouldn't come down as much and and try to steal a calf or a, a, a sick cow, something like that. He said mm-hmm. it still happened from time to time, but it didn't happen as much. From that time on, I thought eastern Oklahoma had bears because I figured this guy knew. I mean, he had owned this land for so many years and ran cattle on it for so many years, he knew what the hell he was talking about. So when this incident happened, well, the only thing it could have been in my brain was was a bear because it was big. It had a, you know, a growl, like a soft growl thing type to it when it exhaled. And uh, so for years, that's what it was, was a bear. Well, it wasn't until I, I, I was watching all these uh, Bigfoot videos the, the people hunting Bigfoots, the, the pictures of them, the sounds, you know, all this stuff. Uh, I, I remembered back to the, when that happened. And I thought, shit, that wasn't a bear. Uh, and years later, it, it, it dawned on me that bears were not in Oklahoma in the 70s and 80s. They didn't start transitioning from Arkansas to southeastern Oklahoma until the mid to late nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I always, I never, that never made that never yeah. dialed into me when I was growing up because I always thought there were bears. The owner said there was bears, so there was bears. Well, it dawned on me watching all this Bigfoot stuff that that was not a bear. And and then everything started making sense because when I was making my way to that cave, I was making a lot of noise, crunching the leaves to get there. My flashlight was pointing down to the ground. And I'm thoroughly convinced that he heard me and he saw my flashlight. And he may not have known what I was, but he heard me and he saw my flashlight. And... He was probably, you know, thinking, what, what, who, what the hell is this, you know? And so when I got to that cave and I walked down the left side of it to get inside the cave, I was out of his vision. Because I, I dropped over the side of the, uh, uh, the ridge. And when I got inside that cave... He couldn't hear me walking in the leaves anymore, and he couldn't see my flashlight. And and I, I thoroughly believe 
that's what walked up to the edge of that, uh, the top edge of that cave, that hillside. And he was looking for me. He was listening for me and looking for me. I just disappeared. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he, he had to have been able to smell me. He just could not find me. He couldn't see me. He couldn't hear me. Couldn't see my flashlight. Just like I disappeared to him. And he sat there or stood there for, uh, man, uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30, I don't know. But after a while, he gave up and he turned around and went back the same direction he came. And I'm 100% convinced that's exactly what happened on that deal. But I sit there until it got light. And when it got light, I hauled ass. I, I went down to the bottom of the draw and I went down the draw all the way to the creek. And uh, I never went back up to that area and hunted. I, I never got to where I would get there before daylight or be there after dark. I, I would go through there during the day when I could see, but there was no way in hell I was going to get stuck out there up there uh, when it got dark. And, and that was, that was the second encounter, but I didn't see him. I, I just heard it. And there's no, there's nothing else it could have been because there weren't bears in Oklahoma then. And, and, and this, it, it was just too big. And, uh, but you know, the whole time I grew up, you know, I was convinced I was a bear. Hell, I was convinced everything was a bear. <laughs> yeah you know uh and after after that happened uh randy uh the buddy of mine he walked down he came down to the house one day with his deer rifle and, and got me and we took off deer hunting it was during christmas break uh there was about i don't know six inches of snow something like that on the ground and uh, we had we we got on the, started walking the creek and we walked down we deer hunted down the creek bottom, down the creek, oh uh, probably a couple miles mile and a half. We never saw any tracks, didn't see any deer, so we decided we would uh, come out of the creek bottom, go across the pasture, and. Uh, walk up the mountain and we would hunt the mountains and the ridges all the way back around to the house. So we crossed across the pasture and was getting ready to walk into the woods where the uh, uh, bottom of the hills mountain started. And we came across some tracks in the snow, some big damn tracks, uh, huge long tracks. And we looked at each other and we looked at those tracks and, and we both thought, man, this is a bear. And it, it's, you know, we could tell the tracks were uh, sort of fresh because the top crust of the snow hadn't been frozen and what had fallen off into the bottom of the tracks was still, uh, still soft, kind of crumbly. So we thought, let's track this thing. It can't be that far in front of us. And hell, man, we'll kill a bear. So we took off, and this thing went up the mountain, went over the top of the mountain, back down, and uh, so we went to the top of the mountain, and we walked, we were making our way down the mountain, looking at the tracks, not even paying paying attention, you know, of that far in front of us, but uh, probably two-thirds of the way, 75% of the way down the mountain, was a, another patch of, uh, of a pawpaw thicket. And uh, these tracks went right through the middle of it. And, and there was an opening. I mean, it was, a, it was a pretty damn good trail through there. So we were following the tracks. They went through that thicket. And I kept my eyes on that thicket. The closer I got to that thicket, uh, man, the, 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 I just got a feeling of dread. This is not a good idea. Do not walk into the thicket. So the closer I got to it, the worse that feeling got. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I stopped. I was about, I don't know, 20 yards, 30 yards from the thicket. 
and I stopped and, I, and Randy was behind me and I, I turned around and I told Randy, man, I do not want to walk through that thicket. Said, I, I don't feel right. Something's, something's wrong. This, something's not good. And he said, man, I got the same damn feeling. He said, let's just go back up to the top of the mountain and we'll just hunt the mountaintops around and go to the house. So that's what we did. And when we turned around and got to the top of the mountain, well, that, that, that feeling of dread, you know, it went away. Everything was fine after that. And, uh, back to when I was, uh, stuck at home watching all these YouTube videos, when I started seeing tracks, uh, that people had taken pictures from and cast and stuff from, uh, snow and the mud. When I saw that first track, that, that jump jumped in front of my mind. And I said, holy shit, that's what that track was. That's exactly what that, it looks exactly like that. That wasn't a damn bear. And, uh, thing in between the encounters, stuff like that happened to me a lot. I mean, uh, one time I, w I was, uh, hunting the side of a mountain squirrel hunting and uh and, and i was pretty pretty far pretty far back in and uh there was a set of brothers their last name were pratt they were the only guys that dad would let come down and cut wood off the ranch uh uh they didn't have much money you know they're Parents didn't work, so they grew up in poverty, but David and his brother worked their ass off. And so dad let them come down and cut uh, firewood on the ranch. That was how they made their living in the winter. And uh, so they would cut firewood and they would cut us firewood and let it lay there. And then me and dad would go pick it up later. Uh, so I'm hunting about halfway up this uh, mountain. And I'm I'm going along the side looking for squirrels, and I hear this whack. Well, the hell is that? And then I heard it again, man. It just went whack. And it sounded like somebody was cutting wood with an axe. And I thought, well, Dad didn't say anything about uh, David and his brother being up here, being around here cutting wood today. And how the hell would they get back there? There's no roads back there. Because they had a, a two-ton flatbed truck that they would fill up with wood and take it to Tulsa and sell it. I said, hell, there's no way for them to get back there. And I, and I thought, no, nah, i got to go check this out. Sound, you know, somebody's, uh, somebody's poaching wood. So I took off where I heard the uh, uh, hits come from. And I got up there and... Hell, there wasn't anything there. I looked around; there was nothing, you know. And you could see you could see a pretty good ways, but I, I I didn't see anything. I never heard anything, and so I walked I walked back to my left a little bit to see if they were more on the flats, and nothing. I didn't see anything, didn't hear nothing. I thought, well, damn, that's you know that's that's odd. It sounded like somebody was cutting wood. And they're not here. And so after a while, I just, you know, thought, well, you know, I don't know, maybe a tree fell. Hell, I don't know. And I just blew it off and I took off. And then back to when I was watching all these videos, you know, the first time I heard tree knocks. That's exactly what this was. Mm -hmm. was, a, was a tree knock. Now, and real quick, when you say... Uh... On the side of a mountain, or you you just say mountain, or you're talking about Oklahoma, right? You're talking yeah. about like a huge hill, or yeah. yeah. Okay, just I know people in the comments will probably say there there's no mountains in Oklahoma, so I just well, to clarify. <laughs> well, when you grow up in Oklahoma, uh, eastern Oklahoma's got mountains, right? Now, now, if you grow up and you're in the Appalachians, you're in the Rocky Mountains. The mountains in Oklahoma are freaking hills, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, but, uh, growing but they're up, they're very steep and they go a long ways. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. Uh, you, you, 
the further south they go, the bigger they get. Okay. But, but yeah, they're 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 deep. They go down deep. And they stretch for a long ways, and and yeah, they're they they're tall. Okay. Uh, so that that's when when I heard the first wood knocks. That's that jumped at me. And I said, shit, that's what that was that day. That wasn't anybody cutting wood because it sounded like it sounded like you were cutting wood with an axe or sound like uh, somebody hitting a home run with a baseball. Just crack. Yeah, I've experienced it many times, and that's the the way I describe it is like Mark McGuire hitting one out of the park with a wooden bat. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, that same later that winter, uh, it was later that winter or the winter before. I mean, the winter after. Uh, well, before that happened, the woods, the the house, the the side of the house was right at the uh, tree line at the bottom of the mountain where it started to go up. And one Saturday night, I I was going to go hunting the next morning, so I was getting ready to go hunting. Well, my dad and my mom and my sister, they took off and uh, uh, went visiting, went to other people's houses. And I didn't go because I was going to stay there and get my hunting stuff ready, clean my gun, do all that crap. I was leaving early the next morning to go hunting. Well, this was... I don't know, 11, 12 o'clock at night, something like that, 10 to 12, somewhere in there. I was in the house, and I was cleaning my rifle, and I heard, I heard this god-awful, loud scream, yell, roar from inside the house. And I thought, the hell, that, that's got to be a mountain lion or a black panther. That's the only thing that's going to be out this time of night. So, and and I, I was told growing up that a, a black panther and a mountain lion, uh, when they scream at night that loud, they can sound like a dying woman. And when this thing scream and yell, combination of yell, growl type thing, I thought it, it didn't sound like no dying woman, but I mean, it definitely sounded like it was it was big, and I loaded my rifle, and it was the same twenty two rifle I had when me and Junior were together that night. But I loaded it, and I walked out on the front porch. We had a screened in front porch, and uh, I walked out on the front porch to see if I could uh, if it would do it again, if I could see it. You know what what. And uh, well, like a dummy, when I walked out on the front porch, I left the light on. I didn't even think about turning the light out, but I left the light on. And I was standing out there, and, and I never heard. I, it never did it again. I never heard the sound again. And going back to these, uh, the videos I watched on YouTube when, when they did, had some, uh, played some videos of uh, uh, people catching audio of them at night. Uh, screaming and and that is that was the same sound. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, it, I can't say that one thousand percent, but it, to me, that was the same damn sound. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what made that damn sound that night, and it and it wasn't that far from the house, and it never did it again. Right. And uh, I always contributed that, you know, that was either a uh, uh, mountain lion or a black panther. Because I was also, we were also told that uh, there's black panthers on the ranch. And they, when they scream, you know, they'll sound like a a woman getting murdered. Mm -hmm. But that's not exactly what this sounded like. But, you know, I mean, hell, I was so all. Okay. So all of this activity is taking place on this ranch, correct? Yeah, now, the first one we saw with me and Junior that night, Mm -hmm. that was about, that was probably 10 miles or so up the creek from the ranch. But still in the same county, still in the same area. Right, right, yeah, still in the same Mm -hmm. county, uh, just up the creek, right. 
Okay. Yeah. And I just want to make that clear. A lot of people, they wonder, you know, how can one guy have so many things happen? But, you know, you're living not only in the forest, in a forested area, you're living around these creatures. And I believe that's, that's, you're in their territory. Exactly. So you're more likely to have an encounter than somebody that, say, lives in the city or even out of town somewhere that doesn't have any Bigfoot activity. Right. And maybe they're keeping an eye on you. And I don't know. There, there's a lot of variables that could be taking place. But, yeah, I just well, wanted they, to clear that up. I've, I've, I, I know people that I grew up with there. To mm-hmm. this day, they've never seen one. Yeah, never seen one. Have you ever looked up reports or BFR re- reports and maybe found your county? No, I haven't. I haven't done that. Uh, I bet you would. You'd be shocked on what you'd find. Oh, I'm. I'm sure I would. Uh, because the the last the last story I, the last one I saw the last story I got for you uh, mm-hmm. is, is the buddy that was with me then. Me and him talked about that. Uh, you know, for years afterwards. And right. and he would tell me that, well, man, so-and-so said they saw one down there, you know, back in, up in uh, a certain holler, wherever they, you know, whatever holler their house w- built at. But uh, after, after the hillside, after the one yelled, uh, uh damn the winter i think it was the winter at, it might have been that winter but i think it was the winter after that because i would have been i would have been about 13 i was driving uh i mean i, I was driving dirt roads I, I learned how to drive you know being on the ranch driving driving in the hay fields you know feeding cattle all that shit but one mm-hmm. the, the the next winter uh I went up to uh, a girl's house that lived in the little town that I grew up in. And uh, it was a Saturday night, and we were watching uh, Saturday Night Horror Flicks back when you only had three channels on your TV. And at 2 o'clock, they turned, you know, the station shut down, and all you got on your TV was snow, you know? So... I went up there and we were watching Saturday night horror flicks until, uh, until the programming stopped, which was, I believe it was two o'clock in the morning. So when that happened, I left and I went back to the house. And when I pulled up the house, I noticed that all the outside lights were on. And I got out of the truck. And I started walking towards the house, and I noticed my dad and my mom were on the balcony. There was a balcony that wrapped around the entire back of the house, and it went out over Spring Creek. So it looked straight down on Spring Creek and the pasture where we were wintering the cattle at. And, man, I heard just screaming, roaring. We... we, that uh, later, I guess about the first of fall into summer, a rancher that dad knew had a Bramer bull. Uh, and Jess brought this Bramer bull down and unloaded it so it could breed with some of our cattle. And this was a Bramer. This was a 2,000 pound Bramer bull. This thing was freaking huge. The hump on the back of this thing probably stood, man, I'm going to say, well, it kind of, it, it, it was so big, it didn't stand straight up. It kind of leaned off to the side, but it, it had to have been three foot long. It, it was huge. The base of this thing's horns were, hell, they had been as big as your, big as your arm, the thickest part of your arm. He, he was a big bull. <clears throat> and when you put that bull into a pasture, that pasture belonged to him. If you were on a horse, you could you could ride your horse out to the pasture. You could ride your horse right up to him. Or if you were in a truck, you could drive a truck right up to him. But if you walked out on that pasture in two legs, this thing would, he would try to kill you. I mean, he, he, 
It was something about somebody walking at two legs pissed him off. And he would literally, he would try to kill you. Uh, So this Brimer was down there. And this Brimer was, I mean, man, these things were just screaming and raising hell. And I hollered at dad and I said, what, what the hell, what is that? And dad said, get your gun. It, 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 a bear is attacking the cattle. I thought, oh shit. So I ran in the house and I grabbed my rifle. It was a 30, 30. I came back out and I went down the stairs of the balcony and, uh, dad just had some little cheap ass flashlight. It wouldn't even throw a beam, not anywhere close to that far, but, uh, but you could hear him. I mean, these, this bear, this bear and that Bremer bull were hooked up and the cattle were raising hell. You know, you could hear them run from one side to the other. And I told dad, I said, look, I'm going to jump in the truck and I'm going to drive around the hill and I'm going to drive up to the edge of the creek and I'm going to put the lights on bright and see if you can get a shot. And maybe I can get a shot too. And so I took off to the truck and my mom said, Bobby said, I'm going with you. Wait a minute. So mom jumped in the truck. Off we went. We drove around the hill, got to the bottom, drove up to up to the creek, pulled up to the edge of the creek and put the lights on bright. And I jumped out and I went to the front of the truck and you could see this thing was standing right on the other side of the creek. And I, it, it was frick. This thing was, it was massive. It was huge. And it was just standing there. It, it, I couldn't, I could not see any uh, reflection from the eyes from my truck lights. And mom started to get out of the truck. And I told mom, I said, don't get out of the truck. Stay in. I said, this thing's, this thing's too damn big. You know, we're, we're not staying down here because he was only, oh, hell, this thing was probably, at best 30 yards in front of me, 20 yards, just on the other side of the creek. And I told mom, I said, get in the truck. We're leaving, you know, that this, this, this thing's. So we drove around, got back to the house and I jumped out of the truck and I said, did you see that? What did you see? How? And dad said, that fucking thing is huge. And he said, stay here. Look after your mom. He said, I'm going up to, uh, I don't want to mention the little town. It, it 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 was that, but Dad said he he was going up there, and he was going to wake some people up, and get them down here. They were going to kill. They were going to hunt this bear down and kill it. So me and Mom stayed on the balcony at the railing, and by this time, well, this is probably I don't know four o'clock in the morning, five ish somewhere in there, and uh. The fight, I mean, the, all the growling and all that crap was over with, but you could still hear that bull. I mean, that bull was snorting and raising hell, and and he was, you couldn't see him yet, but you could hear he was trotting, trot to the left, turn around, trot to the right. And uh, my my guess was he was, he was playing guard dog uh, to the right and to the left, had the cattle behind him, so... Uh, so this thing, this bear wasn't going to get to the cattle. And you could definitely hear him doing that. And he was snorting. He would raise up his front legs and he would thunder them down on the ground. He was pissed. And, uh, but you never heard the bear, the, all the growling, all that stuff. It, it was gone, went away. Well, it got, it got light to where you could see and you could start making out the cattle down there and you could start making out that Bramer bull. And he was still running back and forth, protecting those cattle. And, uh, it was about that time dad showed up and he had, uh, there was a Jeep behind him with four guys in it. There was a truck behind him with three guys in it. I told him what had happened that the fight ended shortly after he left. Uh, I, the bear, I can't see the bear. I don't think he's down there. The bull's down there and he is pissed. And, you know, dad said, well, all right, just, just stay here. We're going down there. Well, they drove across the creek and went to, you know, where the fight happened at and all that shit. And then they took off three different directions to try to track this thing down. And uh, as it got light, 
that bull was standing there and that man that bull had he had slashes and blood on his hump on on both of his shoulders both sides uh of his uh the front left and right side of the front on the side of his neck he had blood on his horns uh i mean it, it was he had blood on him and and i'm it all of it was not his uh i mean he was still standing loud and proud i mean he you couldn't tell he was hurt at all and uh so we figured well if it wasn't for this bramer you know this hell that bear would uh you know he, he hell he'd got a cap, cap or two but uh and and that's where we let that go that was a bear big bear really big bear and him and the bramer you know the bramer protected the cattle from this thing and uh hopefully he heard it and so dad and them they you know a few two three four hours later they came back and they never they never found it uh nothing ever happened from it and so we were there for a few nights after that we were pretty much on uh 24 alert keeping after the cattle and and nothing else ever happened that never happened again well go back to when i'm watching the all these youtube videos the first bigfoot somebody showed that was standing there with his back to him you know that popped up into my mind i thought holy shit that's exactly what that was that wasn't a bear standing there because it was just too tall and the shoulders were squared off uh if you know what i mean i mean they were wide and squared off a, a bear shoulders like a football player yeah exactly a bears if you ever seen mm-hmm. a bear the, the way they stand big damn bear yeah shoulders, you know so I yeah thought, I thought, son of a bitch, that's what that was. Now, yeah. take, in, take, take into account that the, the, ran- the guy that owned the ranch told us when we moved there that the bear had been coming out of the mountains for quite a while in the winter attacking his cattle. So all this time, this guy's thinking, these are bears doing this. Mm-hmm. And how long this had been going on, I don't know. But you know, for year years, from the way the the this guy was telling us, you know, that's why they moved the cattle. And uh, right. so this that been happening for quite a while. So yeah. it, it, So after seeing those pictures of one standing back to you, you you're looking at their back, I thought, son of a bitch, that's what that was. And then it got to bothering me. Why didn't I see its eyes reflection in the lights of my truck? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I couldn't, and I thought, I, I couldn't figure that out for a while. And then it dawned on me one day, I said, look, this thing probably weighed six, 800, maybe 900 pounds. Mm-hmm. And it, it had been in a fight with a 2,000 pound Bramer bull for the last, I don't know, three hours, two hours. He wasn't yeah. taking his eyes off that bull. That bull was kicking his ass. Right. Pretty much he was paying you guys no attention. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he he was he was watching that bull. That's why I yeah. didn't see his eyes because he weren't he wasn't facing us. Yeah. And and I, I can guarantee I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh that bull put a hurting on him, a big hurt. Right. Because yeah. that that the the blood that was on now the bull had some pretty deep scratches in him, but uh, he sure as hell didn't act like it, man. I mean, uh, yeah, that was a big ass bull. But that happened, and then I dawned on that's when all this stuff started clicking on that event. Mm-hmm. And I thought, son of a bitch, man, you know, that was that was just un unfreaking believable. Right. Yeah. So you think the Brahma bulls? protecting the rest of the herd and maybe oh, the the predator was trying to get one of the the smaller cows or whatever the calves right the right. big one just wasn't having it and he just couldn't get through not on exactly. his own exactly that and and the the bigfoot was on two legs mm-hmm. and anything yeah. you know uh, a, a person it didn't matter what you were if you weren't two legs and you walked out in the same pasture he was mm-hmm. he would he would he, he would try to kill you. He would try to run you down and kill you. 
there was something about two legs. Now, I don't know when he, if the bull was younger, if he did the rodeo circuit and uh, uh, all the bull riders and all that stuff, you know, were riding him and they pissed him off. And that's what the thing about two legs was. I don't know, man. I couldn't tell yeah. you. Yeah. For me, I just think bulls, they just don't like people when it comes to mature bulls. True. I mean, the ones that I've seen, because my family, they're from Mexico, and man, they're just ruthless. But up here, my friends that have cattle and they got bulls, they're pretty calm. They're pretty chill, but I don't know. Right. I, don't, I don't approach them either, so I don't know. But no, yeah, you... the ones down south, man, they're, they're, they're wild. They just want to kill. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They do not like you in their territory. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want to go back to the first encounter when this thing was on your side of the bank and it was getting ready to cross the creek. Did you get like a view of the figure like in like you could see like a shadow? Like it was all black? No, it was uh it was you could only dark. hear it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. The eye shine that you saw when it when it went up, about how tall do you think it was standing? Shit, dude. Uh, now you got to tall. If you think since that side of the bank was where the erosion was from the water, it was higher up than where we were laying mm-hmm. from the inside of the creek. It was probably. I don't know, three or four foot taller ground wise from where we were at. And right. then and then you add on top of that the height of this thing. I mean, man, it was it it, it was a long ways up there. I I I'd, I would have to say ten to fifteen feet at least. I mean it was it was and that's just a guess because I, I I don't know I can't tell you exactly how much higher that bank on the other side was than we were, and mm-hmm. exactly how tall this thing was. But uh, um, the eye shine they they seem to be pretty big eyeballs. I they mean, were huge. Yeah, like the size of like a coke can or even bigger than that. Dude, I'm I'm probably exaggerating here, but they looked like they were the size of a dinner plate. Okay. I mean, and and I know ninety percent of that was fear because I yeah. was mesmerized on the eyes. I could not take my eyes off those eyes. I just could not get over the fact how how red, how big, and how far they were off the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and, and until Junior shot his shotgun, until I saw the flame from his shotgun come out of the barrel. I was just mesmerized. I, I, I was. I didn't know what was going on around me. And when what when, did you think? What did you think when you first heard the the gun blast? I couldn't tell what you your thoughts. Okay. I, I, I could not tell you. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know. I I wasn't sure what that flame was. Uh huh. Okay. You know, it, it snapped me out of this mesmerization, whatever the hell you want to call it, with me fixed on this thing's eyes, and that scared me. I mean. I'm sure I jumped off the ground a little bit, but mm-hmm. when that thing, when that thing, and and Junior only he was only using, <clears throat> hell, he only had like birdshot in his shotgun that we would use for squirrels and stuff. So, you know, number six shot, seven and a half, something like that. Yeah, but but when it, so it didn't even phase that the animal that he shot. Most uh, likely, no. it just pissed it off. It pissed it off bad because yeah. when yeah. that thing went to screaming and roaring. If you've ever been in a creek bottom when a really, really loud noise happens, mm-hmm. it goes everywhere and it's magnified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, what does it sound like? Do what? What it sound like when it, it got hit? It sounded like a scream, roar, growl combination. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, how long did it last? Was it uh, one vocalization or was it a bunch of them going off? I don't mean a bunch of them, like a bunch of individuals, but just a, du- a bunch of different sounds that it was making lows, highs, growls. It was, it was a bunch of different sounds and it was continuous. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and, that's right. And when that happened, I was up and I was gone. 
I was not hanging yeah. around no more. I was done, you know, because this thing, hell, this thing could have gave hell shit two good jumps and it would have been right on top of us. And I was done. I, I was, man, I was done. It was over. I was hauling ass. Do you think he followed you out of there? No, I don't really. Uh, hmm. It, I, I think it stayed right there, and it tore the shit out of the pawpaw thickets. It was mm-hmm. roaring. Uh, no, I think it stayed right there. It, and when it, when it, after we left, and it got over, it's tantrum. I guess if you want to call a tantrum, getting your ass shot with birdshot. But uh, mm-hmm. when it, when it was done, I'm sure it left. Uh, probably went back the same way it came i don't know but it did not right. come across the creek it didn't mess with any of our stuff that was there yeah did you guys find any tracks when you went back uh we didn't me and junior didn't we junior and i didn't even go to that side of the creek his dad mm-hmm. went over there that's and, right yeah his dad did he said yeah. it was tore up yeah he's it was tore, and we could see that as far as the pawpaw thickets go from where we were at we could see that this thing it, it snapped a lot of them off and it just jerked a lot of them out of the ground. Right. And at the time you probably didn't know it, but I don't know if you'd go back anyways, but if you went back, you would probably find structures and just experience strange things while you were in the area. But uh, like you said, that was a while back and right. who knows it could still be going on today. Um, it, it, I would put money. It is, uh, because the yeah. last time I Googled earth, that area, uh, from that area all the way down to the ranch where I had these sightings in the ranch, all that's still the same. Yeah. Now, can you describe the ranch a little bit? Like, it, does it have like a huge valley in the middle, like of pasture, and then like two huge bluffs on each side, or maybe it's built like a stadium, kind of like a giant stadium? Can you well, maybe describe the terrain a little bit? The terrain. Uh, the only real usable part of the ranch uh to raise cattle horses you know any kind of livestock Mm -hmm. is is down there around the house uh if you cross the creek where this fight happened at that pasture by itself was probably a mile wide and and it was probably three miles long yeah so how big is the ranch? It was fifty five hundred acres. Oh wow! Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, it, oh, it, it, how, it was massive. How many neighbors? How many neighbors are there? But, I mean, how many neighbors could you have with the ranch that big? <laughs> well, the only neighbor we had was two miles away, and mm-hmm. that was when you when when you drove the road to leave the ranch. Uh, she was. It, it was a mile to get off the ranch, and then when you left the ranch, it was a mile uh, down the section line dirt road to her place, and mm-hmm. that was that was the closest house to us. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to go to the part where you were hunting, and you're going up the the bluff or the mountain and you got up into that little cave i wanted to say when you were telling me that that was my thought that when you got in there that thing knew you're coming and you just kind of disappeared so he came down to check to see where you were at and he never saw you so he left that's what i kind of got before you told me that oh really yeah that was the sense i got but um yeah, I think once you got onto that bedrock, he couldn't hear you anymore. And I think they can just hear, I don't know, some people say they can't hear any better than any other animal, but I think they can. And I, I know it sounds strange, but I was watching the show last night, and they were talking about T-Rexes. It was a documentary about dinosaurs. Right. But they were saying that the T-Rexes could hear through their feet. And I thought, man, that's strange. You know, if something could do that from a long time ago. Maybe it's possible that an undiscovered animal could be doing that today. Right. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird one, but who knows? (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, 
you know, as far as the T-Rex goes, I, I think hearing through the feet, I think that'd be more of a feeling of vibration. Yeah, vibration. But I mean, maybe they're so connected with the earth. You know, we wear shoes, you know, we're wearing a rubber sole. So there yeah, is energy true. and magnetics going through the earth. We're not connected to it anymore. You exactly. know, these animals, they got big feet. They have their senses are just hyper aware. Maybe, maybe that's how they're doing it. Because for me, the ones that I snuck up on, I was wearing Crocs and I was walking on an asphalt paved road because one part of our driveway is paved and I was oh. sneaking through there and I don't think he heard me, but some people, you know, researchers say that they let me see them, but I don't know. When I saw the Sasquatch as I did, they seemed really surprised, you right. know, just like they got busted. But right. I don't know. I wasn't wearing heavy shoes though. I was wearing the Crocs and I was walking on asphalt, not leaves or anything. And asphalt, you would think, you know, I'm in town or something. But no, that's just how our driveway is way out in the middle of nowhere. Right. It's just easier right. for instead of having now, gravel I, I i don't think that they just let you see them because mm -hmm. they have dealt with humans us started off with the indians for hundreds of years and yeah hell we shoot them they know that you know so yeah they're, they i've only talked to one person that i believe this one let him see him because he was telling him, if you F with me, I will kill you. And that was, that happened in Southeast Oklahoma. Uh, this old boy was uh, at the fence line at his pasture and at the far end of his pasture, he said, this was an alpha male. He said, this thing was a solid 15 foot. He said, this massive thing mm -hmm. walked out is of his pasture and look straight at him and he said he got the feeling that this thing was saying if you if you shoot me mess with me i am going to kill you and turn, right. he said he'd, he'd turn around and walk back in the woods and he said no says, i'll come back tomorrow yeah and, I, and, and and of all the stories i've heard and what and, and ones i experienced that was the only one that I think intentionally let him seem, but at the same time, I think it was giving him a warning. Right. And it was yeah. definitely an alpha male. Yeah. He wasn't even going to wait for him to come into the woods or try no. to throw some rocks or maybe do some rocks. He just came straight out and let him know that he was there. Right. Right. Yeah, and from all, all the information I've gathered and people that I've talked to, that is the attitude of an alpha male. Mm -hmm. The alpha male, alpha male isn't going to play games with you. Uh, he will, he'll straight up, you'll disappear. Yeah. Uh, where, whereas other ones will throw rocks or, you know, they'll howl or uh, parallel walk you or, you know, crap like that to scare you, to get you out of an area. Uh, I, I really believe an mm -hmm. alpha male's got the attitude. He will get you out of the area, and you will never be seen again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I hear that a lot. That the alphas are completely different. Oh yeah, that, that's a complete different animal. But I, mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you, they have, they have damn good hearing, and they have damn good eyesight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that and that yeah. you know, with that with that person, what you said that that person told you that their their ear, their hearing is not any better than any other animal. Uh, you know how damn good animals can hear in the woods, right? I mean, their yeah. life they can hear pretty life, good. Yeah, their life depends on it. You know, yeah, they can hear yeah. a mouse part. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot a Native American culture still left in oklahoma at least i noticed that when i drive through there there is there was a yeah. lot of a lot of indian stuff um are there any natives that you could talk to today that know about sasquatch around you or maybe you've met on the internet or i don't know well it, like i said i'm in north carolina right now my uh my uncle okay. got uh, okay yeah yeah my uncle's got cancer and my aunt's not doing good so i came out here uh, to take okay. take my uncle to his appointments and all that crap. 
I, I when I get back right. to Oklahoma, uh, yeah, there's there's uh, some Indians I grew up with that I can talk to about this, and I would rather talk to their dads or their grandparents, but uh, but here in North Carolina, yeah, that's what I was maybe there. Some, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, when I get back to Oklahoma, I plan on all these places where I've had all these, you know, experience on the ranch and up there at the Creek by Junior's uh, place. Uh, I'm going back to, I'm going to find out who owns the ranch now and try to get permission to uh, uh, just go back out to all these areas and, you know, just see what I can find or hear or anything else. Yeah, and I think you'd be shocked that maybe they're experiencing some of the same things you did. Right. Right. And whether they know what it is or not, but I can guarantee you, well, I'm pretty sure I can guarantee you that they're, they're, they have to be experiencing it to a certain degree, whether they know what it is or not. Right. Yeah. And it makes me wonder how many people, you know, have heard something come up on them in the woods or maybe found like a deer with a broken neck or heard the breathing like you did, but couldn't figure it out or saw like a man, like being walking across the Creek. How many people see that stuff and just completely toss it out of their mind and say, Oh, it was nothing and never really think ever that it was Bigfoot or even if they do, they never really research it. So they never think back to be like, Oh my God, that's what that was. That rabbit. Missing the head right in, on my doorstep, you know who knows? I don't know. Whatever right. it was, right? Oh, I, I, man, I can I can guarantee you, so much of that goes on, you know, and and even from people that want to have sightings, uh, I've spent so many years in the woods, and you can go out to any section of woods, and you can look just just look, you know, try to look. 50, 60 feet into the woods and 90% of what you're going to see is black. Oh yeah. I mean, when you look at uh, trees that far in the woods, they look black, they're dark and you're not going to see That's right. the half head of something hiding behind that tree, just sticking half of their head out, keeping an eye on you. You're, you're not right. Gonna that. Especially they're more intelligent than us as far as being out in the forest and there's multiple ones working together. So it's not like a deer, or a bear just walking out in front of you. That's what people want with Bigfoot. They're like, well, why aren't there pictures? Why aren't there any videos? Where, where's all the proof? You know, it's the yeah. point of this not being discovered and people telling their stories is that they're obviously smarter than us. And well, that's why they're not discovered. I think we, we taught them to be that smart. Now, when I say we, I'm talking about, Number one, my ancestors from one, 200 years ago. Uh, I mean, even far back as 1950, when, when somebody would see one in the woods and hell, they start shooting at it. You know, you learn pretty damn quick what's out there that's trying to kill you. And you will. Avoid- yeah. And even before what? Even before the white man got here, I mean, there were good tribes and there were bad tribes. And some of the tribes you didn't want to mess with, you know, and so, you know, the Indians knew that exactly. uh, they wanted to keep moving. Yep. They've just, and, and, they've always seen humans treat each other horribly and do horrible exactly. things to each other. Exactly. And, and that's, you know, that, that's why they want to stay the hell away from us. And that's why they won't hesitate. Uh, they won't hesitate to make us disappear because it's, it's, yeah. You know, it, it's life or death to them. Mm-hmm. And they are, yeah. you know, they're they're smart. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> they're a hell of a lot smarter than we are. Now, technology-wise, yeah. they're not. But when it comes to survival and wood skills and surviving in the woods, shit. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> they, yeah. they got us beat by so much. Oh, yeah. Survival for a human. I mean, I think it only goes so far. You're only going to be out there for so long or some someone's going to find you. But with these creatures, I means forever, never getting caught. And that's the true definition of survival, surviving out in the forest. Exactly. That's where they live. When we walk out into the woods, 
we are in their living room. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And you well, mentioned... I, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, you mentioned uh, stick structures earlier. Mm-hmm. I've only... I've only had one experience walking up on what I know now to be stick structures. Yeah. Uh, it, that was hunting up a hill or working my way up a mountain. Uh, I was squirrel hunting because it was, uh, oh, hell, it was summertime. It, it was probably late summer, I'm guessing. And I came up on an area where the trees. It was on the side of the hill where the trees and probably, I don't know, 50 yard, 60 yard, oh, circle, semicircle, all the trees were blown down, all different directions. And when I first looked at that, I thought, well, it must have been uh, or tor- a tornado last spring must have came through here and just dropped down and went straight back up. I mean, that's, that's the only, that's the only thing that could have done this. And it was, you were not going to walk through it. It, That shit was just too thick. And so you had to walk around it. And when you walked around it, you had to go back up the hill towards the top. So that's what I did. And when I got up to the edge to where the blowdown went back down the hill, at the at the at the highest part of the, the blowdown, there was a two trees up there stuck together to make uh, a, a, like an X. And I, I looked at that, and I I just assumed that that was part of the tornado that dropped down and didn't blow the trees down. They just got wedged together, but it made an X. And uh, I didn't pay it any any mind, and I just took off, kept hunting. And, you know, back to watching all the the videos, uh, when I first started seeing the X's uh, stick structures and different areas that uh, uh, of blowdowns where they would, I guess is where they would, uh, I don't know, be living temporarily. You know, that was like a... uh, early warning device because you were not going to go through there and be quiet. All right. And when, and, and if you followed the edge all the way around, well, that took you to the top of the hill. So you weren't going to turn around and come back down the other side. Uh, you know, it was going to divert you to another direction to keep you going. And, and that X up there, you know, was, uh, uh some kind of sign to other ones you know saying hey we're close by here you know whatever you know an an address if you will yeah but that that was the only thing that even closely resembled uh uh stick structures and and it was later on that i learned that, that tornadoes in the mountains they don't do that right Tornadoes don't go up and down with mountains. They they're on a flat plane and they stay there. That's right. So yeah, that that convinced me that that definitely was that definitely was some kind of stick structures. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like it. Uh, oh man, I had so much but, damn stuff. Oh, you're fine. Um. Do you, do you have any anything else major that's happened, or would you say that's the bulk of it? Well, let's see. That would have been that would have been three. The last one I saw was uh, seventy seventy five. Mm-hmm. Uh, November of seventy five. Oh, we we. We were in school. We, uh, it was before Thanksgiving, and we were getting ready. Uh, they were gonna. Uh, we had like a couple days left before we were out of school for uh, Thanksgiving break, 
Well, uh, uh, we uh, a storm, a snow storm started to move in. It started moving in that morning. And the talk in school was, well, after lunch, if this snow's still coming down, they're just going to, they're going to cut us loose. So, uh, me and a brother of mine that I grew up with, Daryl, uh, we were out at my car for lunch and I told Daryl, I said, man, this snow isn't going to stop. They're going to cut it. They're going to send us home after lunch. Hell, what, let, let's just take off. Let's just go ahead and go. I said, we need to, there's, there's a place we deer hunt off, just off the highway on the ranch. And there was uh it, it was a, a pasture in the woods. Uh, it was a natural pasture in the woods. Somebody at some point in time, a long time ago came in and uh, uh, cut the trees out for firewood or whatever the hell for, but it turned into a pasture. And there was always deer coming through that pasture. And I wanted, there was, uh, the year before that, there was three does that religiously you could count on them coming through that pasture in the late afternoon, early evening. And uh, so mine and Daryl's thought was, well, if the does are coming through there, still coming through there, especially in the rut, well, we can probably catch one or two bucks coming behind the does and we'll take the bucks. So we thought we're going to go back up there and we're just going to sit. We're going to climb up in trees and we're just going to sit and wait and, and see, see if the does are still coming out there like they did the year before. So we get, we pull off the highway and we head towards the ranch. We pull over, we get out, we walk down a uh well we crossed the fence and we walked down a uh an old logging road oh probably i don't know half a mile three quarters of a mile and we turned to the left and we crossed that fence and then oh about a couple hundred yards from there was the edge of the field and uh it, it was still snowing the snow was coming down from left to right it kind of uh Oh, like a 45 degree angle, 50 degree angle. The wind was blowing. Uh, not really hard, but it was blowing. And I was on the. That would have been. I was on the south side of this field. Up in a tree. Daryl was on the east side of this field in a tree. <clears throat> the deer came out. The, east, the west side of the woods into the field. And so we got up there and uh, not, uh, this is probably, I don't know, 1, one thirty somewhere in there by the time we got there and got set up. And uh, I'm sitting there and I'm scanning uh, left to right. I'm watching the field. I'm looking the whole tree line all the way around uh, for anything to come out of the trees. And we're up there for about an hour hour and a half, something like that. And uh, I'm scanning the other side, left, right. And I notice at the edge of the field, straight in front of me on the other side of the field on the edge, there's two small trees. They're probably, I'm gonna say six inches diameter. They were small and they were identical. And there was a, a, a black, I don't know, like a black dot, if you want to say it, between the trees, back behind them. And I looked at that and I thought, you know, hell, I couldn't tell what it was. I had no idea what it was, but it was, it was just a black, like, dot glob thing, you know. And I, I, I watched it and nothing, you know, and I thought, man, I, I didn't see that before. I don't think I did. And, and I watched it and nothing. So, I kept scanning left to right, left to right. And about 20, 30 minutes maybe went by. And I, I, I looked back at that area and I stopped and that black spot like looking thing was bigger. And so I zoomed in on it with my eyes. I thought, what the hell? You know, that, yeah, that I don't remember that being that big before. And I kept watching it, looking at it and, and, 
I did not see no, I, I didn't see any arms move. I didn't see legs move. But this thing, it looked like looking between those two trees that this black spot grew into something bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was kind of like it materialized between those two trees. And and I knew it didn't materialize, but it was about a hundred yards from me. And I'm looking through a snow that's coming down at an angle and it was straight in front of me. So I'm not going to see the arms move or any legs move because it's moving extremely slow to begin with, but it just kind of looked like it just like materialized. And I thought, what the hell? And I watched it and I, nothing. I never saw it move. So I kept looking left to right and I caught some movement in my peripheral vision on my left side. And I looked over, well, a doe had walked out. And she she walked out into the field about, I don't know, 10 yards or so. And then another doe behind her. And, uh, well, two does came out behind her, and they were smaller. So I figured that was her. She had a set of twins over spring. And then another mama doe walked out with another set of twins. And the 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 lead doe was about, by, by now, it was probably about 20 yards in front of the other ones. And the other ones were just milling around, you know, picking at grass and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, something was wrong with that front doe. I mean, she acted like, she acted like something was bothering her, like she was on alert. And I thought, now, wait a minute. I know she didn't, she didn't smell me. She didn't see me. I've got the wind at my face. You know, what, you know, what the hell's, what, what's her problem? What's her, she walked out, I don't know, about another 20 yards and she shot her nose up into the air and sniffed, turned around, blew, and they all hauled ass the same direction they came from. And I thought, you know, what the hell, you know, what, what happened? She didn't smell me. She didn't see me. Something scared her. So I looked back to where they went and they were, they were gone. They weren't coming back. So I kept scanning the field again, looking for something that, you know, may have came out into the field that, that scared her, you know, a coyote cat, something. I didn't see anything. And, and I stopped, I looked back between those two trees and that big black object is still standing there. I thought, what the hell, you know, that, that thing hasn't moved. And, and I know it wasn't there when I first got here. I'm, I'm, I'm not stupid. And I couldn't find out what happened to the deer. I looked back from the right to the left at that black thing again. And, and I just stayed focused on it, trying to figure out what the hell that thing was, where it came from. And I was beginning to talk myself into, well, maybe it was there the whole time. And I, I just, you know, when I first noticed it, that was the first time I saw it paid any attention to it because this thing nothing moved it never moved and uh so it was about probably an hour 45 minutes before the sun, sun started to set and i was looking at the field again i looked back at that black object and i could see this thing backed up straight back into the woods where it came from and it looked like it kind of, it looked like it just, just dissolved, but it, it actually, it, it, I know it walked straight backwards. I just couldn't see the, the legs move because I'm looking straight front at it. And, you know, I thought, oh shit, man, I know what that was. And I said, it's time, it's time to leave. And I whistled at Daryl. I jumped down out of the tree. And we met at the fence. We climbed the fence and we were walking back down that logging road. And I'm thinking about this. I know what the hell that was, man. And I looked at Daryl and I said, dude, did you see anything odd or strange on the other side of that field? And he stopped and he grabbed my right arm and spun me around. And he said, was it between those two small oak trees? Did, did it look like one of those big black Bigfoot MFers? 
and that's that's all the that's, that's all the recognition I needed. We were gone. We ran back to my car and took off. And back to these uh, the videos, Bigfoot videos. When that flashed back at me, I thought, well, what? Well, that's what the deal. The, the hell, that's what it was. That Lee Doe smelled it because the wind was out of the north northwest with that front coming through and and that bigfoot was on the he was on the north side of that field and the deer came out of the west side of that field so when she got almost halfway across that field she could smell it and it was time to leave but i i'd never smelled anything you know i've i've heard you know, from all kinds of people, you know, watching the videos and talking to people that, you know, they smell a really bad smell. Some say skunk, wet dog, trash, whatever. <clears throat> I never, I've, I, I never, never right. have smelled anything. Yeah, yeah. But that's what it was. Yeah. That that the that Bigfoot had those deer patterns just like we did, and and I firmly believe he was at the edge of that field. He was. He was out there to hunt, try to get some meat. Right, yeah. And when those deer took off, well, it was time for him to go to plan B, so he left too. Right, yeah. Well, that's but, crazy that uh, that he confirmed it for you. What you were thinking, what you were, what you were looking at. Right, exactly. Exactly, but you know, yeah. for, it, there for a while, you know, I thought, well, why didn't I see it move? You know, and then it, it dawned on me that, well, right. I'm looking through snow, and and he's coming straight at me, and he's 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 moving so slow, you know, uh, smooth and slow. Hell, I can't I can't see his legs move. Now, Daryl, on the other hand, right. and I never did, I never did ask Daryl, but. He was on the south side of that field, so he could have seen yeah. the legs move. Right. He might have got a better look at it. Right, exactly. He would have got more of a profile look at it than I did. But I I, hell, I, I never asked him about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it sounds like you've had a lot of activity happen in your life, and you've paid attention, and... I think because of that, you know, you've, you know, you know that you've experienced activity to where other people, if they just brushed it off, they, they would never know. Right. Right. Well, that, you know, I, I just, I was fortunate. I had 5,500 acres of nothing but mountains, trees, and creeks to, uh, and when I wasn't working, you know, helping dad with cattle, horses, whatever. I was in the woods. Mm -hmm. I was in, I've, I've okay. seen yeah. every animal Oklahoma has to offer. And that includes mountain lions. Right. No pain. I even, for the first yeah. couple of years, every once in a while, I would even see a timber wolf. Uh, but that was only for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there, there was yeah. no bears in Oklahoma then. Or black panthers. Right. Well, it definitely I, sounds like you had activity happening on that farm. And, uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to go back, definitely let me know what you find. Oh, I will. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going back. Uh, uh, never, okay. you know, yeah. out, out of all that stuff, I, I never encountered anything that acted like it, it wanted to do me harm. Well... Except for that first one, the junior shot. I think he wanted to kill both of us, but I mean, other than that, right? You know, it, it's everything I saw, experienced. Uh, never, it, it, they didn't show any aggression. Now, the one that, that stood up above me on that cave, why he was following me, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Maybe he thought right. I would be, you know, I'd make a good meal. Uh, or maybe he just wanted to know what the hell I was doing in his territory. Right. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. 
it sounds like a lot of them are just curious and that's why they come in they want to know what people are doing well if you in look their at territory it, if you look at it and and you you lived out there i know if i lived in the woods uh and somebody came you know walking through the woods that I've never seen before, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep an eye on them until I find out, you know, what the hell are you doing? You know, you just passing through or oh, yeah, gonna yeah. try to do some harm and they're going to do the same. Thing. Right. I mean, uh, they're just animals. They're, they're animals that know humans shoot at them. They want to stay away from us. Uh, they breathe air. They bleed red blood, and they can die, and they know it. Right. Well, I really uh, appreciate you contacting me and uh, telling us all your stories as a hunter. And yeah, it was awesome. Well, I've I've never, uh, I've never talked to anybody about this, other than Daryl. Mm-hmm. Me, me and Daryl, when we would get together off and on over the years. You know, we we talk about it a little bit, but other than that, I've, I've never sat down and told. Uh, I've never told anybody all of it, everything. Right. So you never you never sent in your report to any no. organization or group. Okay. No. Well, I appreciate it. No, uh, I did a few years ago. Let's see, was it? Um, yeah, I think it might have been a few years ago. Uh, hell, I even forgot about it. But one day I was listening to uh, Dixie Cryptid, old Cam. Uh, mm-hmm. He he was one. Of the, I, I don't listen to much. Uh, I, I I don't listen to a lot of stories anymore. Uh, once in a while I will. I like the ones you've had on. That that's what uh, intrigued me to touch base with you. But mm-hmm. I, I sent I sent some information to Cam. Uh, yeah and see if he might be interested and i told him i said look i'm gonna be straight up with you uh if you don't believe me that's fine uh i know it's a lot of shit uh it's a lot of stuff to go through but being in the middle of 5500 acres where these things were at uh mm-hmm. you know that that that's your call if you don't believe me that's fine I don't, right. I, I don't give a shit if you believe me or not if you want to hear the story, I'll tell you. If not, don't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, now it, it's, I've been fortunate that, that it happened the way it happened. Mm-hmm. I just wish, I just wish back when it was happening, I would have knowledge on them then as I do now. Right. I, I could have seen a lot more stuff. Yeah, yeah. You were in the right spot to be looking. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to do it again That's when we get back. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, I think we're getting past our threshold here. And, uh, yeah, like I said before, I, I really appreciate you calling me and doing this video with me. Oh, that's all right, man. I uh, I listened to some of your uh, videos you've done already and uh, you know, you seem to be a, uh, you seem to be knowledgeable and trustworthy and, uh, and I thought, well, yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to him. If he wants to hear it, I'll tell him. And if not, then I'll never bring it up again in my life. And you wanted to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you again hey. for calling. Uh, you bet, man. Thanks for reaching back out to me. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in contact. I'll uh, oh, I'll yeah. message you. We'll talk some more. I'll tell you some of my theories and thoughts, and you can ask any questions you have or whatever. And we'll okay. keep in contact as as you go back to Oklahoma, or if you ever go back out there, we'll we'll touch base. And oh yeah, I'll I'll let you know when I'm going out there. And in the meantime, I'll. Uh... And I know there's a lot of things that, that happened, like seeing the tracks in the snow that I thought was a bear, hearing the tree knock that I thought was not. There, there's a lot of shit that, that I have forgotten. I think of periodically one or two things. Mm-hmm. From now on, when I think of something, I'll take my notepad and I'll write it down. And, uh, yeah. 
and then maybe the next time we talk or next year uh i can go over that with you and you can see if you've ever if, if you heard that from somebody else or experienced it or whatever okay yeah that sounds like a great idea but and, missouri uh, missouri's not that far from oklahoma so when i get back and get set up uh hell we might put together i might get you to come down there and i'll take you out and show you these places and we can spend a few nights out there and hell maybe see if we can uh see or hear something yeah for sure be nice to camp cook up some deer meat and look around see what we can find yep yep bring a gun yeah bring a gun that's for sure <laughs> I, will, I will never ever go out there without a gun right because chances yeah. are you're not going to come across one that's got a bad attitude you know or an alpha male but mm -hmm. the possibilities there right yeah you never know right um you you did say you wanted me to keep your name out of this you want to rem re remain anonymous no. correct no it doesn't matter that's fine okay okay well i never said your name while we talked while we were while I was recording, but you know, in the description, I'll just say Robert or if, if that works for you. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You know, it's, like I said, I don't, uh, uh, and I'm sure you're going to have, you're probably going to have, uh, uh, so called haters, uh, ratting you about this, but it all no, comes down. Not, not as, not, not really with the stories, like the ones that I narrate or the ones that I do Skype calls. I never get any bad comments, never. It's just the people that do the documentaries. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something about the entertainment. You know, if people aren't entertained, they're going to hate on it. You know, something <laughs> right. listening. If they don't like it, they're just not going to listen to it. They're not even going to give it any time. Yep. Well, I've heard a lot of people bitch and whine about, you know, how, come <laughs> this, how can you see so many of these things? I've been looking for 20 years out in the woods and, yeah, my only right. answer is, you know, dude, you don't know what the fuck you're looking for. Right. I know hunters that hunt more than me, kill bigger deer than me, and they've probably never seen one or even thought about a structure. And exactly. they're always out there. <laughs> right. Yeah, you you just, and it took me years and years to learn it, but you just got to know what you're looking for. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, so. Yeah. It is what it is. That's right. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to hop off here, get some lunch, and get to work on this video. Well, good deal, dude.